since I haven't given you guys much in terms of content, I thought I would at least do a fun quick video whilst I'm on break. Recently I've been trying to get more people to understand what Libre software actually means. In both the KDE and Element videos, I went off on a side tangent about what open source and Libre software is, but I really only did that because I want everyone to be on the same page. From now on, I'll be referencing this video when I need to get people up to speed on what I mean when I'm talking about digital freedom, Libre software, and topics like that. That's not to say, oh, this is homework, but rather it's good context for enjoying some of my other stuff. You can also revisit my other videos after this with a bit of extra knowledge, plus any other videos on the topic. Without further ado, here's a long overdue explanation of what Libre software actually means. Libre software, or as it's more commonly and confusingly called free software, is software that provides the user a variety of otherwise unavailable essential freedoms. The reason you want this is because free software lets the user do as they choose, especially when compared to some of the other programs and applications that are out there. You can basically boil it down to four essential freedoms. Freedom zero, you have the freedom to run the program as you wish for any purpose. Pretty self-explanatory and fundamental, hence freedom zero. Freedom one, you're free to study and change the program in source code form. Freedom two, you're free to redistribute copies so you can help other people. Freedom three, you're free to redistribute copies of your modified versions to others, namely to benefit your community. Also to note, in order for freedoms one and three to even be feasible, the software has to have easily accessible source code. Whether this be via open source or a way to get repo access with a phone call or an email, it has to be available to everyone and anyone who can access the program. This is taken from GNU's website under the free software section. Links to sources in the description, by the way. The people running the GNU project also run the Free Software Foundation and are also the developers of the GNU utilities in... Be a jazz video without a Linux mention. Note that you can generally get some variation, but you can tell how hard software is trying to screw you over <clears throat> Discord, <clears throat> by how many of the core freedoms that violates. If none of the freedoms are upheld, well then that software is considered proprietary. Proprietary software is the software as pure property kind of software. Most people in the know generally try to avoid proprietary software. This is unless they have a good reason to, or otherwise have no other option. The GNU website does mention that, quote, while we can distinguish various non-free distribution schemes in terms of how far they fall short of being free, we consider them all equally unethical. For example, the only proprietary software I'm generally fine with using is Steam because Steam input is really useful and I want to support indie developers. Valve also has good Linux hardware, namely the Steam Deck, and supports the free software world on Linux very well. That's why I'm a lot more comfortable supporting them over Microsoft, Sony, or even Nintendo these days. Look, in all honesty, as long as you're making conscious decisions on what software to run based on those four freedoms, you're doing better than most people. I'm pretty grateful I don't have to use most Microsoft software these days. You might be wondering why we call it Libre Software in this house and not by the original free software label. That's because we're still a very obscure community and people often confuse and conflate free software with freeware, which are completely different things. Libre is a borrowed term from Spanish and other romance languages. It means to be free, which better illustrates the point of Libre Software. It's also heavily evocative of the English word liberate, which has a similar etymology to Libre. Freeware also has a more fitting term borrowed from Latin, and also present in Spanish, called gratis. This is defined as without charge, and without charging anything monetarily. These terms are really helpful to disambiguate what you mean by free, adding a kind of required specificity that the topic needs to really stand out. I personally always use this because it's more distinct and clear what I mean, so people don't get caught up with semantics. If you use these terms, people will ask what they mean, and since you know now, it's really easy to explain to them what it means. Funnily enough, you can sell free software. Oh, I'm sorry, Libre software. See, that's why it's justified to call it Libre software and not free software. You can't sell free software, but you can sell free software. 
or rather you can't sell gratis software, but you can sell Libre software. The reason to run Libre software is because a lot of the proprietary software out there has negative anti-features. These can include the following. Number one, spyware and tracking. This slows down hardware and software and is extremely privacy invasive. Anyone who has seen an ad that is a bit too targeted can attest to this. Number two, ads. Scene number one, this is usually pretty annoying. These are designed to grab your attention and waste your time. Side note, if you need an ad blocker, use Ad Nauseam along with Firefox. They're both Libre and Ad Nauseam has a ton of anti-surveillance features. Number three, subscription services and lack of ownership. A lot of the big proprietary streaming companies want you to rent media from them. This is instead of buying a one-time physical copy, ripping it from the disc to a file and being done with it. Also, there's like 10 streaming services now, so... ill. Number 4. DRM Digital rights management often slows down applications and doesn't even work long term. It actively gives legitimate customers a worse experience and doesn't even do enough to stop pirates. There's a whole other discussion about how piracy is a service issue, but I'll have to save that for another time. Regardless, DRM is pretty undesirable if you care about getting a good experience from your entertainment. Number 5. Straight up malware. Yes, this does happen. It's not super common, but just to be safe, always assume that by default proprietary programs contain malware, especially if they're native programs designed to run directly on your machine. This goes double for programs with obfuscated code, which looks like this, as they're likely explicitly trying to hide how the program functions from you. If you need to use a proprietary program, you can use a network analyzer tool like Wireshark to check any outbound connections. Some combination of these anti-features are common to proprietary software, and the software that contains those anti-features should be avoided where possible. It's extremely rare for these features to be in Libre software, since the source code is always easily verifiable and auditable. I really want to emphasize that Libre software is most always designed such that they avoid these problems. That's why it's very important for everyone to always seek out Libre alternatives to existing proprietary software where possible. There's also a culture around making Libre software as frictionless as possible wherever and whenever possible, which makes it very easy to use. Case in point, I wouldn't be able to make these videos of this quality if it weren't for OBS, Caden Live, and Inkscape. People also tend to look out for each other in this community, and it's commonly understood that everyone is to make their software such that it upholds the four freedoms. Where possible, always use Libre software. If you can, take existing software you have and search up Libre Alternative to Program, and replace program with the program you want to find a Libre alternative to. For example, Libre alternative to Microsoft Word returns a bunch of websites mentioning LibreOffice Writer. Try this on all of your workstation software. Anything from the Adobe suite is a good candidate. Anyways, I hope that clears everything up. Bit of a shorter one this time around, but I have to get back to work on some other projects that I've been working on, so I hope you enjoyed this. Music credits will be on in a moment, and sources will be in the description. If you enjoyed this video, it would mean a ton if you shared it around to your friends. The community surrounding Libre software is in this interesting position where it's super influential and very obscure at the same time. Passing this one around will be a nice gesture, and if you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments so other people can answer them or give tips and advice. As always, thank you for watching, and take care.